A thermistor is a component whose resistance changes with temperature. Now there are two types of thermistors. There are those whose resistance is going to increase with increase in temperature and those kinds of thermistors are the kind that behave like metals. Because even with metals, when the temperature of a metal wire or a metal conductor increases, its resistance increases also. And when a conductor has got their resistance increasing with increase in temperature, we refer to such a conductor to be having a positive temperature coefficient of resistance. And then also we are having we have thermistors which have their resistance reducing with increase in temperature. Now such thermistors whose resistance reduces with increase in temperature are the kind that are having what we call a negative temperature coefficient of resistance. Now what are thermistors used for before we dive deep into this voltage current relationship? Well, the, some of the applications could be, uh, one, they can be used to protect the circuit. Uh, here, what I mean by this is that uh, the thermistor is used to limit the amount of current that can flow into it. So that means that if too much current flows into a circuit, this much current causes the thermistor to heat up. And if the thermistor is such that its resistance increases with increase in temperature, then definitely the resistance will rise up. Consequently, reducing the amount of current flowing into the circuit. We, we can also use these um, thermistors for, for inrush current limiting. Now, what I mean here is that initially, we can get a thermistor and put it in a circuit. And when we put it in a circuit, we are putting it there to initially oppose flow of current. But that doesn't mean that current is not flowing through. Some current is going through it, but it is initially opposing its flow. However, as a result of the current flowing through the thermistor, the temperature of the thermistor rises and this causes the resistance of the thermistor to drop, letting current to flow more easily. The other application of the thermistor, it can also be used in temperature sensing. Well, let's not get... The purpose of this video is not to actually get deeper into the applications of this thermistor. I will be concerning myself with the voltage current relationship for a thermistor coming up. Ohmic conductors such as nichrome and constantin wire have a linear relationship. By that I mean that when their voltage increases, the current also increases. That is, voltage is directly proportional to current. However, when it comes to other materials like the thermistor, in this case, the relationship between voltage and current is not linear. Right now, I am going to draw a description of an experiment that demonstrates the voltage-current relationship of a thermistor. Right before us, we are having the setup of this experiment. We have the thermistor right there. It is being held by two metallic tongs in between. These two metallic tongs are call them holders, call them tongs, they are connected to terminals A and B. Now, of course, here we are having a beaker with water in it. This water will be heated, and as we are heating this water, we are having a thermometer that is meant to gradually detect the temperature of this water that we are heating. So, in essence here, we are trying to heat this thermistor as we monitor the temperature of this surrounding water. So, we are going to connect these two terminals that are connected to the thermistor, terminals A and B, we are connecting them in this circuit. This is going to be our circuit. So terminal A is connected right there and terminal B is connected right there. And across these two terminals A and B, we are going to put a voltmeter. This voltmeter is what is going to give us the potential difference across the ends of the thermistor. And definitely we are having an ammeter in our circuit and this ammeter is responsible for get, giving us the amount of current that is flowing through the circuit. We have a real start also, which we are going to be using to regulate the amount of current flowing. And of course, with this kind of experiment, after setting up our experiment like that, the first thing we are going to do is to close the switch. And then um, we close the switch, the real start is adjusted to give a reasonable value of potential difference across A and B, that is across the thermistor. So when that is done, the voltmeter and the ammeter readings are then read. So we shall read the voltmeter and ammeter readings, then we take our readings, then after, then we record our readings, then after recording our readings, we are going to monitor the temperature of this thermometer until it is 10 degrees Celsius higher. 
when at, it is at least 10 degrees Celsius higher, we shall come back and take the ammeter and voltmeter readings, record them after recording them, we wait again as this boiling continues, this temperature definitely will increase as we shall be seeing by the thermometer. It increases to another 10 degrees higher, then afterwards we take the voltmeter and ammeter readings. Again, the boiling continues, I mean, the, again, the heating continues. The temperature increases to another 10 degrees higher, then we take the voltmeter and ammeter readings and record them. So in short, what I'm trying to say is that the voltmeter and ammeter readings are read at 10 degrees Celsius intervals as water is heated gradually until it boils. After each reading, definitely the switch is opened to save the battery because if you leave the switch on, it will drain the battery. So every after reading you take, open the switch to save battery. Then definitely after recording your values of V and A in a suitable table, then you plot a graph of voltage against current. Now, when you plot your graph of voltage against current, you're going to come up with two different graphs depending on the thermistor you are using. If, if the thermistor you are heating in the beaker had a negative temperature coefficient of resistance, your voltage current graph will look like this. And if the thermistor you are using had a positive temperature coefficient of resistance, your voltage and current graph will look like this. Remember we said that when this thermistor is having a negative temperature coefficient of resistance. Negative temperature coefficient of resistance in this case simply means that as the, re the temperature of the thermistor increases, the resistance decreases. And then when it's having a positive temperature coefficient of resistance, it simply means that as its temperature increases, the voltage also increases. So the voltage current characteristics are not linear as we can both see and this is an indicator that a thermistor is a non-ohmic conductor. This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out other excellent videos on the channel and don't forget to subscribe. Academy. This is Anwar Rangakuramia helping you manifest excellence.